Our Twitter question today is just winning enough for BYU football. That said, let's bring in Trevor Maddich. It's another Maddich Monday. Trevor, welcome back to the show. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going great, man. How are you guys? We're fantastic. BYU 3-0, and one of 23 teams in college football that are 3-0 and right now. Let's start with our Twitter question for you today. Is just winning enough for BYU this season? Yes. Um, no. It depends on what's <laughs> on. enough for what. You know, I mean, BYU, there's a lot of football left. And the, the players and coaches – don't look at it from a standpoint of if you run the table, what happens? They look at it from a standpoint of who do we have this week. And I will tell you this, that when I played college and NFL, I almost never knew who the following week's opponent was because I just didn't care. And these guys are that way. But as fans, you know, and as, as, as commentators, we have a lot of fun with this stuff, right? And the thing is, yeah. if, if BYU goes undefeated and they just eke out wins here and there, chances are pretty good they'll end up in the Miami Beach Bowl. But, you know, third, you know, undefeated is undefeated, and that's exciting. If they can, however, become a team that's in the top ten and attractive as a potential at-large selection to one of the New Year's Six Bowls, the Contract Bowls and the Access Bowls. And so to do that, I think they would need more than just to eke out wins. Because, unfortunately, this schedule, while it has a lot of tough teams on it, tough wins, they don't have a lot of marquee, splashy opponents there that a win would impress the selection committee with strength of schedule. So in some ways, it'd have to be like Florida State last year, where Florida State beat everybody by 40 points. And so, you know, that's why I think BYU, uh, they, they just want to win the game. But for BYU fans that want to see them go play on New Year's Day or even possibly make the Final Four, uh, then they've got to hope BYU runs people out of the stadium. To me, the playoff is unrealistic. I just don't think that BYU gets into the playoff. It's going to be hard enough to get into the New Year's Six. And even then, uh, uh, from the fans' perspective, I think it's too much to expect, hey, let's win and win with style points. It's like, just win. It's not like it's Boise State where you've gotten undefeated several times. It's BYU where it's happened once and it was 30 years ago. Is it unrealistic to expect more than just trying to win every game, Trevor? Well, it is. I think BYU fans are, have been spoiled by BYU success. And Bronco Mendenhall has been incredibly successful. I mean, Lavelle Edwards style successful over the course of his, his run here. And so BYU fans just expect that. When BYU loses a game, the fans are shocked. And they're upset about it. And the thing is, in college football, how many teams ever go undefeated in any given season? Yeah. Ever. It happens once in a while, but it's, it's, it's very uncommon. And so these days with a 12-game regular season, winning double digits, winning 10 games is a phenomenal success. And yet at places like Alabama, Florida State, USC, BYU, a lot of times that's not enough for their fans. And I think that goes a lot to the credit to the players and coaches who have built that kind of expectation based on their performance. Trevor Mattis, ESPN College Football Analyst, BYU National Champion Center on BYU Sports Nation with us. What's the water cooler talk like at ESPN surrounding BYU after a 3-0 and start? Well, it depends on, on when during that game you were at the water cooler. <laughs> I think in the first quarter, BYU looked like it was running Houston out of the stadium, and the water cooler talk was, wow, these guys are fantastic. Then BYU kept stepping on their own tongue and making dumb mistakes. And the water cooler talk changed to, yeah, BYU's good, but they'll get run out by a top-tier team if they make these kinds of mistakes. So right now, who BYU is is up to BYU. They're good enough to impress everybody on a national level. But they also have shown the, the capability to make mistakes that make – People on the national level, people here at ESPN, wonder if they deserve to be in a New Year's Day Bowl. Because those kinds of mistakes, some teams are good enough to win in spite of them. BYU is not one of those teams. BYU is 3-0. Is it too soon to talk about an undefeated season from the fans' perspective? No. Fans should be talking about it preseason. Of course. You know, that's what we're for. You know, then if, if, if BYU doesn't make it, we talk about why they didn't. That's part <laughs> of the fun of it. But the thing is, there are some really tough games. Now, this Virginia team, by the way, uh, preseason at the ACC Media Days, it was almost comical to listen to how the media defined Virginia because they're in the Coastal Division out there. And that, there's no clear favorite in the Coastal Division. There wasn't coming in anyway. And what everybody said out there at the ACC Media Days was, Who's going to win the ACC Coastal? Well, 
first let's take Virginia out of the mix. Now, oh, wow. any, any of those guys could do it. Well, what's Virginia done? UCLA goes out there a top-10 team. Virginia's defense runs Brett Hundley ragged. UCLA can only score one offensive touchdown and only win the game because their defense scored three touchdowns, yeah. and they won that game by eight. Then they get Louisville. Louisville is ranked. Louisville, one of the better teams in the country, one of the best offenses in the country, and all Virginia did was beat Louisville. So that's two ranked teams. They should have beat them both. And so this Virginia game, if BYU wins it, this will be a tough out. I mean, this Virginia team gets after the quarterback. They penetrate well. They're second in the ACC in sacks right now. And, oh, by the way, BYU is not doing a stellar job of protecting their quarterback, Taysom Hill. Then you go to at Central Florida, at Boise, Nevada. These are tough games. So fans should be talking about the possibility of going undefeated right now because they're 3-0 and for the first time in what? since Jimmy Carter or something like that? Since 08, but just the third time since 94, Trevor. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, there you go. And I think the fifth time, yeah, so, so it's okay for fans to do it. But BYU has a lot of tough football left to be played and a lot of teams that can beat them. It starts on Saturday on ESPN, 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain, against Virginia, who's coming off a, a win over 21st-ranked Louisville. That defensive front seven is legit, led by Eli Harold. I mean, that guy, that guy looks like an NFL player. What kind of team should BYU anticipate playing at elevation in Provo this year as compared to Charlottesville last year? Well, they should expect a team that's, that's chippy because Virginia's been hearing all offseason and all preseason, all summer, how they're the, the, the weak child left out of the conversation in the ACC. And they knew they were better than that. But nobody else did. And so I, and plus, this is a team that performed very well against BYU last year. Now, there was the goofy rain delay and all the other stuff that happened out there. But, but either way, what BYU can expect is a team that will attack them at the line of scrimmage. Uh, on offense, you know, Virginia will try to establish the run. Good luck, because this defense is one of the best in the country. Not one of the better, one of the best in the country, BYU's. But on BYU's offense, the book is kind of out. What Texas did, what Houston did to attack BYU to various degrees of success or failure was to attack the line of scrimmage. And they see in their scouting that the offensive line is the weak link where they can get an advantage. And sometimes the offensive line has has performed incredibly well. Other times they've been pushed around. So I think what BYU fans need to watch in this game is when BYU has the ball, look at how disruptive – Virginia tries to be from a game planning standpoint to try to make that offensive line of BYU prove that they're getting better week to week. So how much better is the offensive line to you? Vastly better than last year. Vastly better. Last year they were often on the ground and their guy was running free. Now, even when even when they're not winning their individual battle, they're still on their feet and fighting. And that's a huge improvement. And this offensive line will be better in November than it is now. Because they're, it's still a young offensive line still coming into its own in this system. They've got talent, but they're just not full grown yet as a unit with full chemistry. So, you know, the, the, uh, I, like, I like the offensive line. I'm worried about them now until they grow up and start to shave. The BYU fan base, (laughs) I'm not sure how to recover after that. The BYU fan base panicked to a degree after that eight point win against Houston. There were some close games in your magical 1984 season. In 1996, when BYU went 14-1, there were four games decided by five points or less. It, it didn't turn out to hurt your chances of winning a national championship in 1984, but did those close games, I mean, did, do you feel like it, it, it it's somehow affected you or slowed you down in terms of national exposure and, and respect? No, I think everybody knew that we were so thoroughly dominant that those things didn't matter, and we were better looking. So, oh, clearly. You know, and you were shaving. And, and every year that goes by, we get better looking and more dominant. The thing <laughs> is, that year, because of strength of schedule, had we gone undefeated, and say, let's say Washington or Oklahoma or one of those other teams had gone undefeated, I think they would have had a better case for deserving to be the national champion. Now, I think we were as good or better than anybody in the country, but that's not the only criteria. There's good enough, and there's deserves it. And we had both, because when we won it in 84, we were good enough. Man, I, I've looked back at those, those highlight tapes, and I see a bunch of NFL-caliber players on both sides of the ball, and guys that went on to Pro Bowls in the NFL. I mean, this was a, this was a, ter- a terrifically talented team that we had. But we also had a lot of help. 
because as we continue to win games, teams ahead of us continue to lose. And not just to other top teams. I mean, South Carolina was ranked ahead of us late in the season. They lost to a Navy team that was, I think, six or three and six at the time or something. So this BYU team would need the same thing, not just to get into the top four, but also to probably get into one of the New Year's Six Bowls. If BYU goes undefeated, but not enough other teams lose, then BYU probably you know, won't end up playing New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. But if BYU goes undefeated, regardless of how they do it, and they get the same off-the-field help that we got, then they have a chance to do some very special things from a, a, a standpoint of what comes their way from outside the program. But all they control is who they play this week. Absolutely. And that's, yeah, you can't control how other people play. So I just say don't worry about it. Just try and win. And if you can win with style, that's great. Trevor, what's the biggest reason BYU's 3-0? The biggest reason BYU is 3-0 is that their talent is better now than it's been in a long time. They committed a ton of penalties against Houston. They had, against Texas, they faced a team that, that was actually more dangerous than people give them credit for and took advantage of some big plays. Um, uh, a ton of penalties against Houston, a ton of penalties against UConn. And the Houston team, I think, was good enough to beat BYU and beat them handily in years past with those kinds of mistakes that BYU made because the, the, the turnovers, the, all the things that BYU did that Houston didn't really contribute to, they were just BYU's problem. And, but BYU's talent has risen to the point that teams on the level of Houston, which is a very good team, this Texas team, which has a very good defense, BYU's talent can overcome their mistakes. The, but you don't want to be the team that's better than most. BYU wants to be the best. And to beat those teams that are the best, you can't make those mistakes. And so that's why I think right now they're 3-0. and Their talent is fantastic. But in order for them to go 4-0, and they'd better cut out those mistakes. Certainly there's something to be said about being minus three in the turnover category and still beating Houston by eight points, right? Oh, there is. And, and the thing is, when that, that end of the second half, or excuse me, second quarter, materialize. I'm watching that game and I'm just telling myself this is going to fall apart. Houston's going to get back into this and, and, and that's exactly what happened. You know, and when you look at that um, uh, fumble during the two minute drill where Taysom Hill completes a pass deep down the left side and the receiver instead of going out of bounds when now he gets corralled he tries to make an extra two or three yards. That's a mental mistake. But Houston was fired up by that. They came back and scored a touchdown. And when you score a touchdown on a Hail Mary, Hail Marys never work. Right. That whole Houston team ran off to buy a lottery ticket at <laughs> halftime. <laughs> and they had that to go to Mesquite. Never works. You know, and so little things like that can turn an entire football game. And, and I don't credit Houston for ripping that ball out. I credit the BYU receiver for not stepping out of bounds like he was coached to do. So this is where, you know, these are things that are exasperating. Now, having said that, am I down on the team? No way. I'm incredibly encouraged that they're able to win against quality opponents even when they're making mistakes that in the past have cost them games. B yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. I was going to say, now that a couple games have been played, who is the toughest opponent on BYU's schedule now? Central Florida is, I thought, maybe the toughest test. They're 0-2 now. Granted, they played two tough games. Is Virginia possibly the best team left on BYU's schedule? Yeah, Virginia might be. Hmm. Virginia might be because they, they've had two games against top 10 teams. They're 1-1, one and, one and they should be 2-0. and oh. and that, that tells you a lot about Virginia. And when it comes to um, Central Florida – I think Central Florida might be, and I would say is, still the best team uh, on BYU's schedule. And the reason is, even though they're 0-2, they, they lost a goofy game in Dublin, Ireland, yeah. in the opener to Penn State. That Missouri team that they faced won the SEC East last year. Yeah. And it, that's a very good team, and they were on the road. BYU gets Central Florida in Orlando. and On a Central Thursday. Fo Right, and so good. They'll have a chance to really showcase here. And darn it, Central Florida, I wish they would have won at least one, if not both of those games, so the nation would know how good they are. But Central Florida lost their quarterback to the near the top of the NFL draft, Blake Bortles. But pretty much every other key contributor to their Fiesta Bowl championship team last year, they beat Baylor in the Fiesta Bowl last year. Most of those guys are back. And so this is a deep group of skilled players, as good a group of wide receivers and running back as there is really in the country. They're in that top tier, probably top ten. 
Uh, their defense is incredibly athletic. Their star of their defense is a linebacker, which is a problem when you're relying on a rushing mobile quarterback because fast athletic linebackers are needed to take you down. This Central Florida team, if BYU is able to win it, will be uh, uh, an incredible quality win that they won't get credit for because of the way Central Florida started the season. There are few harder working men in college football media, the world of it anyway, than Trevor Maddich. Trevor, we have the massage uh, chairs ready to go for you in Studio B. Anytime you can get over here to help you uh, recuperate after so much uh, busy craziness early in the college football season. You know, that, uh, <laughs> that would be too much to hope for. <laughs> right now all I'm trying to do is put one foot in front of the other, and you've just given me hope for a, a kind of heaven that I can't even remember what it's like. So keep that in mind for me and remind me when the season's over. You got it. Thanks, Trevor.